Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, NVIDIA isn't getting rid of their founder's cards. Intel's going 3 nanometers. This Tesla can play cyberpunk. The 11,900K could heat your home. And GPUs no, are about God. to get even more expensive. No! Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, there's been a story going around about NVIDIA's Founders Edition cards being taken off of their European stores. In fact, the only place you could find a card was the RTX 3090 on NVIDIA's Polish site. At the time, most assumed that NVIDIA was likely getting rid of their Founders Edition cards, which would be pretty terrible given their Founders Edition cards are the only ones you can get for MSRP right now. Well, luckily that is not the case, as NVIDIA updated outlets on it shortly after the story broke. According to them, a technical error occurred that delisted the cards, but they're already back up. So, if you're like me and you were worried about this, it looks like NVIDIA is not getting rid of their Founders Edition cards. At least not yet. Of course, with all this new hardware coming out, it can get tough to know what to buy. That's why I offer my PC hardware suggestions at kit.co slash gamermail. In it, I go over why you may want to buy one thing over another, from GPUs to CPUs and more, as well as provide tips when buying certain components. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try to reply as soon as I can. Plus, when you make a purchase, it helps the channel out at no additional cost to you. So don't wait and visit kit.co slash gamermeld or click the link in the description below. Next up for today, we have a new report from DigiTimes, who as many of you know, can be hit or miss when it comes to accuracy. What's important here is that it's regarding TSMC, who's based in Taiwan just like DigiTimes. Basically, if anyone would know this, it's them. So what am I talking about? Well, according to a recent report that was translated by Retired Engineer, Intel signed a huge contract with TSMC last year. In the contract, the biggest order was CPUs built from TSMC's 3 nanometer process, set to enter mass production in the second half of 2022. According to the report, TSMC will even be handling the mass production of Intel's core products, so we're talking their mainstream processors. Apparently, Intel will use this as an opportunity to focus on R&D. With all of that said, Intel isn't done with fabrication themselves. According to this, Intel still plans to move forward with their own EUV production, and they're buying all the equipment needed. Of course, if this is true, to which I will say retired engineer has his doubts, AMD may need to be a bit concerned. They've relied on TSMC's process technology to beat Intel to the punch for a while now. If Intel begins using their architecture with TSMC's fabrication, Intel could get the jump on AMD. I guess as always, time will tell. And next up, Elon Musk just teased an updated Tesla Model S, and it can play modern games. That's right, the upcoming car comes equipped with a new infotainment system that sports a whopping 10 teraflops of computational power. And it doesn't stop there. According to Elon Musk, a new gaming platform called Tesla Arcade allows the car to play games like Witcher 3 and even Cyberpunk. As for what GPU it comes equipped with, most are speculating that it has AMD's Navi 23, to which a block diagram was just leaked of the upcoming Navi 23 GPU from Patrick Schur. As you can see, it comes with a whopping 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. At the end of the day, I just hope Cyberpunk's bugs are fixed on the Tesla or Road Rage could have a brand new meaning. Next up for today, we have a pretty interesting story on Intel's upcoming 11,900K. And before I get to it, I will say that some people have an issue with this benchmark, but there's also misinformation going around, so I'll get to that shortly. Anyway, the story originally comes from the Chipel forums, and as you can see, one of the users were able to get a hold of Intel's upcoming 11,900K. Now, really quickly, you may have noticed that it shows the 11,900KF, but the user later stated that CPU-Z was wrong, and it's the 11,900K model. Anyway, in the post, the user ran an ADA64 stress test with a 360 AIO, and as you can see, it got up to a whopping 98 degrees Celsius during the test. Not only that, but it pulled an unbelievable 250 watts. That's unreal, especially since it was running at its stock all-core boost to 4.8 gigahertz. Now, the issue some people have is that it shows a voltage of 1.4, which is way higher than you would expect, but very few people actually looked at the post. You can see that he claims 1.4 volts is wrong, that it was actually pulling 1.325 volts. Of course, even that's a bit high, but remember that this is a new core design, so it may require it. 
The only thing I could think is that this is an engineering sample that isn't made to get to those clocks. Then again, the user doesn't mention it being an engineering sample and seems pretty stumped as to why it got this high as well. Still, don't forget that it was a stress test, so you won't see this kind of temp while gaming or anything like that. Either way, if this is correct, Intel's upcoming 11th gen CPUs may be able to keep you warm in the winter and cook your breakfast. Maybe that's how the upcoming KFC console keeps your food hot. And lastly for today, I have some terrible news. As if GPU prices haven't been bad enough lately, thanks to supply issues from the thing that shall not be named, coupled with massive demand from both gamers and miners. Even when supply catches up to demand, we could be looking at yet another price increase above the new tariffs. According to a report from MyDrivers.com, GPU prices are expected to increase due to an increase in memory prices. The increase is expected to take place after Chinese New Year on February 12th, and it could affect everything from GDDR5 to GDDR6 and obviously 6X. Both the RTX 3000 and RX 6000 series GPUs are likely to be affected. Basically, 2021 is continuing to be yet another terrible year for PC hardware. Hopefully with Intel coming into the GPU mix soon, we'll finally get a chance to buy a GPU before next year. Please. So while that does it for today, are you planning to kind of wait it out until Intel's 12th gen or are you just wanting a new GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.